Hello everyone, God richly bless you and welcome to the Gospel Bite. In this channel, we seek to share and encourage you, brethren of like precious faith. We trust you find this channel a blessing. Stay tuned and you will be blessed. Amen. Shalom and God bless you all and welcome to another episode of the Gospel Bite. I am your brother Lawrence based in Saskatoon, Canada and we always endeavor to bring this program to you every week and uh, whenever the need arises. And we are privileged today to have our dear brother, uh, Brother Andrews from Virginia, USA, who is here to bless us with the word of God. And I will entreat you to open your hearts, prepare yourself to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your souls. We all know that we are living at a time where truth is hard to come by. But when we have Brethren who are anointed, God has called, ordained, filled with the Holy Spirit, and they are able to break the word of God unto us. We count ourselves very blessed. So, Brother Andy, can you wave to our audience? God bless you. God bless you. So, my audience, that is Brother Andrews. I'm just going to uh, start the session, a word of prayer, and our brother will come and bless us with the, with the word. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you and we bless your holy name. We thank you, O Lord, that you have saved us and you have brought us unto the light and you are preparing us for your soon coming. Lord, as we wait on thee, Lord, we need, O Lord, to be dressed in the revelation of your word. And Lord, as always we do, Father, here on the Gospel Bite, we feature men of God, brethren of like precious faith, who come and bless us with the word of God. And today, Lord, I commit my brother, brother Andrew, unto your hands. Father, may you let him speak your oracles unto us today. Lord, we don't do these things just to uh, please man, but we, we do these things to place your name and to bring more souls unto the kingdom of God. We pray, O oh Lord, that today will be a blessing unto my audience, will be a blessing unto each and every one of us. We pray, O oh Lord, that you begin with us, go with us, and end with us in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So, my audience, welcome, Brother Andrew. Brother Andrew, your audience. Thank you very much, Brother Lawrence. I appreciate this opportunity. And I, I deem it a very high privilege to be able to um, come on the Gospel Bite. I believe that the sons and daughters of God uh, find nourishment in opportunities and programs like this. And God bless you richly for uh, this ministry that you're doing. I also want to thank you for inviting me. Uh, thank God for making it possible for us all to be here. Um, 
without wasting much time going straight to the ministration of the word, I want to just say, Lord, come and bless this time that we have, Lord, and commit myself into your hands as my brother has just prayed that, Lord, the word of God is eternal. And we believe that wherever it goes, it will accomplish the purpose for which it was sent. And as servants, Lord, I want to humble myself before you, before your people, and ask that you would come and take this earthen verse, and Lord, you would use it to your glory. Fill me with your anointing and let the word come forth how you have prepared it, Lord. We pray and ask blessing upon the ears and the hearts that will receive it. Let it not be like those that fell on the wayside or in the rocky grounds or among the thorns. But we pray that it will be received on good grounds where it shall take root and go deeper, downward, and also bring forth fruits upward. We pray and thank you again for this session. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to... I wanted to speak on the topic of victory. And as I was studying, I realized, um, you know, you cannot have victory without first having a battle. And life seems to have its own way of presenting us with various battles in life. And it's often said that character is molded through circumstances. The Bible tells us that our Lord Jesus Christ himself learned patience through the things he suffered. And he learned obedience through what he suffered. So God's will for his children is to take the circumstances of life, the downfalls, the disappointments, the mistakes, the errors, the points in life where you feel like you have lost it and blown the opportunity, where we feel like we have made such a terrible mistake. Those are the situations that God is able to come into our lives and make his word come to life in us. The Bible say, in Jesus Christ was life. He was the light of the world. And if he himself had to learn through suffering, then all those who are going to be called after his name must also suffer. Beloved, our suffering should not be the same as the world when they suffer. If we have come and tasted of the new birth and we have been washed, our minds has been renewed, then we are partakers of this heavenly glory, of this divine promise, as the Bible says. So therefore, we do not suffer as the world suffers. Even though we may go through the same circumstances, our outcomes is bound to be different. And definitely as the Hebrew children, when we are going through that storm or that fiery trial, we know there is a fourth man in the fire with us. So therefore, my subject of victory takes on another word called faith. And faith is our victory as the Bible tells us. So let us turn the scriptures to the book of 1 John, chapter 5. Let's read from verses 4. The scripture reads, For, what so, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory, amen, that overcometh 
the world, even our faith. So faith is our victory. Faith is that victory that overcometh the world. And I love this scripture so much. And the emphasis it lays on overcoming the world. I think I can speak confidently about the victory that Jesus Christ brings to his children and his subjects. Faith in who? Let us read the next verse in verse 5. And it tells us exactly what type of faith it is that overcomes the world. Verse 5, who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen to that. Believing that Jesus is the Son of God is that type of faith that overcomes the world. We find a lot of people today would say, I have faith, my brother. I have faith, my sister. So what faith exactly is there? What faith is the Bible talking about that can overcome this world? Many different types of faith. People put their faith in their health insurance. People put their faith in their families in their parents, faith in our brothers and sisters. And even today, some put faith in their churches. Some put faith in their pastors and their ministers. Some put their faith in their jobs. Faith in their, in, in their, in their, their little groups that they belong to. But the Bible is saying it's only one type of faith that will overcome this world. All other faith will fall at the feet of temptation. All other faith will give up at some point. All other faith will cease to exist. But the new birth, the scripture says, once we are born again, the Bible said we become a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That newness of life gives birth to an inner man. And that inner man then begins to live according to the faith in the Son of God. That faith, brothers and sisters, is a unique type of faith. It's not a faith that is just confessed. It's not faith that is just tuck away and carry to you to church and back. No, it's a faith that becomes the life that you live. It's the faith that does not just dwell in an intellectual in the mind, but it's a faith that descends deeper into the doors of your heart. It's a faith that overcomes the world. It's the faith in the Son of God. And I want to talk about faith. It's our victory in overcoming the world. If you would turn with me also a few pages over, we can go to 1 John chapter 3. And we can read from verses 1 through 4. Let's read from verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be. Amen? Let me pause right there. 
This is a new life we are talking about. It's the kind of faith that once you go through the, the confession of your sins and the repentance and the new birth, and you go through water baptism, the Bible says in the book of Acts 2, 38, that when we repent of our sins, God is obligated to what? Fill us with the Holy Spirit. And God is a man that keeps his promise. God does not lie. God does not play with his words. And when he says you repent and turn from your sins, accept the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary, that he will give you this redemptive blessing and seal your faith in Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. Believe me, that's exactly what he means, and he will do that for you. What we find out today is a lot of people do not go through repentance. They do not experience true forgiveness of their sins because their repentance is a mediocre type of repentance. They claim that they are repenting from their sins and don't want to do a certain thing anymore, but deep down they still have love for those sins. And sin is unbelief. Because you believe not, that's why you commit those attributes of sin. If we really truly believe in the Son of God, in Jesus Christ, and the Bible says His blood cleanses us, from all unrighteousness. That's the purpose why he was sent. Let's read a little further. It says, But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he, Lord Jesus Christ, is pure. Verse 4, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. What law are we talking about? The law of God, the law that came to us through the prophets that wrote them, penned down the Bible for us. We cannot despise the word of God and claim to have faith. The Bible say, when the Son of Man shall come, shall return, shall he find faith in the world, in the earth? Will there be faith? What faith is he talking about? It's not just faith of being a Christian. It goes beyond that. It's a faith in a lifestyle. It's faith in the kind of life you live on a daily basis, every minute, every hour. Beloved, this world will attack you. This world will throw all kinds of conditions at you. And I want to give a little testimony myself because I believe we overcome by the power of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. I'll tell you a story of my own self, how that for many years, I was a slave to sin. I was a slave to drugs and abusive drugs. I was a slave to this flesh. And there was no way of turning away from that. That's why I use the term a slave. Now, I've been in the United States this June. This past few days was my 20th anniversary. From the moment I stepped foot here, there was a prophecy that was given by one brother who was a deacon in the church before the entire family left Ghana. Bible Believers Fellowship, and we came here. My father has been, had been a pillar in the church 
for many years, for all his life, I would say, the life of the church. And the testimony was given by the brother who approached me and he said that I should be careful going to the United States. I in particular, not my other three siblings, but I should be very careful. And he about scared me to death. I asked him what he meant by that. He said he couldn't go any further, but he told me that I should take care, very good care to be careful and vigilant. And that many things will come my way, many trials. It wasn't long after we had been here and going through my high school and graduating. I got together with some wrong crowd of people whom I called friends, but realized that not long, less than two, three years, I was already being introduced to cigarettes and to marijuana and to all kinds of drugs. And it was a gradual introduction to sin and to its attributes. At the age of 18 years old, when we came here, I was 17, soon to be 18. And the devil had his plan and his traps already set for me before I could even leave Africa. And a brother saw the vision and he told me that. And here I am here. And, and I, was, I was sinking deeper. And always strain away from the word of God. I was raised in the message, brought up in church, trained by one of the main pillars in this message of the hour. And I want to call, I want to say I was a decent son, but I got so caught up into this drug system. That before I could realize it, I was heading down the path so dark. A year passed, and a second year, and a third, and fourth, and from 2025, 20, 26, it wasn't until 2010 or 2009 that God began to deal with my heart. And Open my eyes like the prodigal son to realize, to come to myself and to my senses that this is not what I was raised up to be. And that if I continue in this path, there will be no future for me. My life had to be cut short. And the Bible speaks about that. That. We have been given this tabernacle called the body. And if we do not take care of it, if we abuse it, God is entitled to take it away from us. God is entitled. God has every right to turn out your candle, as the Bible says in Ecclesiastes. Beloved. The devil moved faster than I could think. And within a matter of of, 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 of years, between five to ten years of my life, it was all going down the drain. God had several encounters in between those years. I won't go into details, but he had to send his word and his servants after me several different times. Sometimes at work, I, I sit here with a book in front of me of someone who visited me at work. Stranger gave me a book and inside his book wrote something, a letter in the book to me carefully. Addressed it to me personally, talking about my future and my past and how a future was brighter if I would only walk out my destiny in the Lord Jesus Christ. In God, a total stranger. And this book is here on my shelf. And I've carried it for many years. And then down through the years, God restored me back. And gradually I began to go back to church. Through the prayers of faithful parents 
I found myself back in church and in youth camps and in meetings. It was a struggle trying to blend and go back into the presence of the Lord. But yet still, God had his arms wide open for me. I found myself married to a, a wonderful sister a few years after coming back to church. Those are part of the blessings for me, repenting of those sins. And the struggle was real. Beloved, I found myself on a trip to a honeymoon to Mexico. On my way back, the immigration system detained me because of my past record with the drugs and how many times I had been arrested. So they, they, they saw me and, and all they could see on the screen with my record was a criminal. But little did they know that I was a, a sinner saved by grace. But beloved, there was another trial waiting to happen. I'm talking about overcoming this world. I'm talking about the faith in the Son of God. And that was a trial I was walking straight into. They detained me right from the, from the transportation security agency right there. They kept me. And beloved, within a matter of few weeks, I was, I, was, I was being transported from this jail to the other and straight to a detention center where the baddest of the criminals are sent to. And if you're on your way, they will send you back to your country of origin. I found myself in this place, in a remote area, heavily guarded. And here I was, newly married for just a year. On my way back from honeymoon, my wife is pregnant with our first daughter. And here I am, behind bars. I had just turned my life over to the Lord. I had just repented. I had just dedicated my life to him, dated my wife for two years and then married. So I'm coming back and I'm trying to walk in the right path and do the right things. And here comes a trial. Smack me straight back to the ground. In this prison, I found myself and I was asking the Lord, why at this time in my life am I here? Why am I facing this, this battle? But beloved, whatsoever you sow, you shall reap. And I was reaping it. But God quickly made a turnaround for me in that jail. I found a group of people who were also believers who were having to begin to meet and put chairs together and, and talk about the word of God. I found a Bible in there. Then I was beginning to read and I could, I could just only spend my time day and night reading the gospel. And all I had was the New Testament. Beloved, I read it and I, I exhausted the book of Romans and Corinthians and Hebrews and that the word became flesh again in me whilst I was there. And God took that opportunity for three good months. Oh, beloved. Hallelujah. For 12 to 13 weeks, God said, you're going to have, you're going to spend nothing by your time in my word. And God took that opportunity and he, he, he broke his word to me. And whilst I was in jail, I found a book from the library on Azusa Street. And I began to read it. And there in the final last pages of this book, as I was reading, came the name of the prophet of this age, William Braham, mentioned in that book. And God confirmed to me that this message that my father raised me in was the truth. And how the revival had come down through the Pentecostal age, a restoration, and the prophet preached about that. 
and we are living in the bright age. And I want to talk a little bit about that victory also, because the victory that Jesus Christ brought to us was through the revelation of the mysteries of God. Because our faith is in the Son of God, and the Son of God came for a purpose. Hallelujah. He came to make known the Father unto us. He came to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and also to turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers through the ministry of the Son of Man. And I found strength, I gained strength in the word of God and through the mysteries that made me to know that I am indeed now a son of God. That is the faith in knowing that you are a son of God. And going back to the book of Genesis, God gave dominion to Adam, to his son. He said, have dominion over everything. Whatsoever you say goeth, and all creation shall listen to thy voice, because I had given you the title deed of ownership. I had given you the authority, the dominion. But through sin, that dominion was lost. That title deed went back to the owner, which is God. And I want to take you to the book of Revelations chapter 5. And let's look at the amazing redemptive story that God had to put together for the salvation of you and for me. Why? Because he needed to bring us out of this world. As we read in the book of John, 1 John 3 and 5, the victory is to overcome this world. The victory is to live above sin. The victory is to be an overcomer. The victory is to find your name in that book of life. In the Lamb's book of life, the victory we have as believers is to know exactly who you are and where your name is written. That's where the Bible says he shall give you a stone. Hallelujah. And the name written on that stone. And only you know the name. Beloved. Don't let the enemy keep you in sin. Don't let the enemy give you a blind faith. If you have faith, then the works must follow that faith. If you have faith, then there is a lifestyle that must live that faith. Faith is not just confessed. Faith is not just a possession. Faith must be lived. Faith is a fruit. And when you say that you are a a bright tree, that tree must be a life-giving tree. A tree without fruit does not give life. A tree may be a shade, a tree that is planted for shade. A tree may be a tree that is planted for beauty. A tree may be a tree that is planted for medicine. A tree may be a tree that is planted, oh, just to be able to, 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 to block the view of the neighbor. Or a tree may be planted so it can give shade to the house. A tree may be planted to become a, a habitation for birds. But if you go to the book of Psalm 1, verse 1, the prophet David, Under inspiration said, Oh, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sit among the scornful sinners, but his delight is in the word of God. Why? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. 
but then he tells some details there about the fruit. Oh, he shall give forth his fruit in his season, and the fruits shall not wither. Don't be a shady tree. Don't be a tree for beauty pattern after Hollywood. Don't be a tree after the cosmos of life. Don't be a tree pattern after the diasporas of this world of finances and, 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 and accommodation and all these things. But we must be a life-giving tree. That's what the sons and daughters of God are. You are a tree that when someone is dying and they come to you, they will find something to eat. They will find life in you. They will find the source of hope and life to sustain them. That's the tree we ought to become. And that only happens through faith in the son of God. I want us to read this in the book of Revelations 5. This is John speaking. He said, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written and in the, the written redeem, and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. And verse 2, I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and lose the seals thereof? And no man was found, no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. This is the book that, it, that has the, the record of the sons of God in it. This is the book that had the redemptive plan inside of it. And John is going to be weeping in the next verse. Why? Because if no one could open this book, then all creation is doomed. We are back to Genesis again. Remember, we are at the end of the book. He had to weep because if he did not, no one came forth, then you and I will be lost in sin. There's no way we could get out of drugs and, 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 and sexual abuse and all this immorality. There's no way we could find strength in, in, in any victory at all except one of the elders in verse 5 says, Weep not, John. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Hallelujah. Verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. Hallelujah. As it had been slain. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Beloved, one of those eyes and horn was sent to us in these last days. It's hard to talk about victory and overcoming this world without having the truth. And the mystery, the very thing, the very knowledge that overcomes this world. Adam traded the knowledge for wisdom. And he lost it all. He lost the title D. When the second Adam, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God came, Satan tried him again with the same wisdom and power, and dominion. But he knew who he was. He knew his position in God. He knew exactly what his purpose is on this earth. Beloved, do you know what your purpose is? Now was lost in sin, being tossed and driven by the restlessness of life. Life was becoming so dark, I couldn't even see straight or make the right decisions until the voice called me out. I want to go back to the scripture we just read here. 
the lion of the tribe of Judah prevailed. You realize that he was a lamb as if he was slain, bloody. And this, this bloody lamb is the one, first of all, he had to come forth from the throne of God. And as he was coming forth from the throne, that's where the glory was. He came down from glory to come and take the book. Hallelujah. And as he come forth, the prophet said to us, when he came forth to take the book, he had left his intercessory role. He had left his mediatory assignment. Where he told the prophet in the book of John 14, he said, I must go. It's expedient for me to go. Why? Because he had to go to the right hand of God to perform and intercede for you and I. To pray for you. Say, Father, I've been there. I've seen the pain. I've seen the struggle they go through. I've seen the, the, the grip of sin and what it does to them. Amen. And I'll send them my spirit. Hallelujah. And that is what Jesus is doing for you and I now. Amen. He is pleading on our behalf. He is, he's interceding for us because our victory is through the faith in him. So he said, those that will believe on me, oh, Father, give them the spirit that will then help them to establish their faith. Thank you, and to Jesus. make them to become sons of God. Now are we the sons of God, beloved. Amen. Amen. That is where our victory is. It's in the sonship. Look, we lost dominion because of sin. The title deed of ownership. That's what went back to the Father. And through adoption... How is adoption done for the believer? See, once you go through the baptism, the confession, the repentance, God promised to seal your faith Amen. with his spirit. And that begins the process of adoption for you. That begins the process of you going through the training as a son of God. Because this authority has to be given to you at some point. But God must make sure that you are trained and ready to handle the sword of the word of God. That's that you are equipped with the knowledge. That is where the message of the hour comes in. Amen. That is where the truth of the hour comes in. That's where you begin to go through the training of God. Amen. To establish you. And I hear of people who have come and tasted of the mysteries of God and turned their back. Beloved, they never made it to attain the adoption of God. And therefore, God's authority, the title deed and the ownership can only be given to you when the the son, the father says, here is my beloved son. Hear ye him. When that is said, when God can say that about you, it means that the faith, the lifestyle of faith is pleasing to the father. Hallelujah. Beloved, don't let the enemy lie to you and think that it is something that you cannot attain. I used to wonder, I used to pray and say, God, how can I ever get to the point where you can trust me with your spirit? Trust me with the power. The Bible says in the book of Acts, I believe chapter 1, verse 7 or 8, he says, as many as received him, what? Gave he power. To become the sons of God. Amen. The Bible says also. In Romans 8. 14. I have a placard hanging here. It says. As many as are led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. Romans 8. 14. You realize that. Faith. Is based on forgiveness. Forgiveness. 
You cannot say you have faith and you hold grudges against one another. You cannot say you have faith and you find it difficult to forgive your wife or your husband. Difficult to forgive a brother or a sister. Where? What type of faith is that? Is it faith in Jesus Christ who was hanging on a cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Faith based on forgiveness. Is what we are talking about. Now I want to read this to you. The first Adam forfeited his rights by taking and listening to Satan's wisdom. And he lost his position as a son. He lost the authority through the title deed. When you purchase a home, it's about the most, the biggest investment in the natural any man will make is to buy a home, at least in this country. And there is a title that is given to you. The title says you own this property and the land around it. You own every square inch of it. And that gives you the authority to do with the land as you please. You own it. Adam had ownership and dominion over the entire creation of God. And he lost it. Now... The Lamb of God, as we read, he came and took the book. And he began to open the seals of the book. Hallelujah. Praise God. Inside of the book was the title deed. Amen. Inside of this book was your redemptive authority. Inside of this book was God's redemptive plan for your sonship. Inside of this book, that is why he had to fight. He came as a bloody lamb. He had gone through battles himself. He did not come here on a silver platter. God would not allow that. Jesus had to overcome the same way you and I will have to overcome this world. But beloved, trust me, the Bible says his reward is in his hands. And his reward is to give you the title deed, the authority to speak to the mountains in life that hey, will come. Man. Sicknesses man. will come. Defeat will come. Rage will come. Finances will decline. Things will come. But then when you find your name written in this book, you realize the title is restored unto you. Yes, sir. Amen. And you have the power, the dominion to be able to overcome this world of sin. Amen. You have the authority to walk victoriously in this life. Beloved, don't take the message for granted. The lamb, the virgin birth was able to produce a blood because it was not by a natural birth or sexual desires Jesus came. He came by the, by, the, by the conception of the Holy Ghost. That is why he was able to produce a bleach that could wipe away sin forever and ever from your life. Beloved, it is our faith in Jesus Christ that cleanses us from sin. And from unrighteousness. I know of a family, a husband and wife struggling. They live in abusively to each other. They are fine for just a day or two, a week, two weeks, maybe a month. They go back to fighting. They go back to exchanging words. And you realize that sin has found its way into their marriage. Sin has found its way into your home. And the only way to overcome sin is to confess it, is to get rid of it. And the only thing that will get rid of sin is the blood of Jesus Christ, the bleach that cleans the stain of sin. And they, they keep, they keep, they keep fighting each other. They are fine for a moment. 
for a few days, a few weeks, and they are back again with toxic relationship. I wonder how, praying for them this morning, I realized God revealed to me there is sin in the relationship. There is sin in the family. There is sin in the marriage. Beloved, you cannot play with sin. It's got to be cut away. It's got to be to be to be circumcised from you. A husband has to repent. A wife has to repent. We have to bring all our sins and confess it to one another because the prophet said, you sin against your wife, she's the one you need to confess it to. Hey. And vice versa, the wife to the husband. And they can have a witness there. Beloved, and when those confessions are made, and God is there to witness it and to bless that union, you realize that devil, sin, Satan can never find a way to penetrate that marriage again. But as long as the two of them Keep believing and repenting on intellectual repentance and just having faith and saying, oh, you know, I, I love you, I forgive you. But yet still two weeks later, you go back to repeat the same mistakes that they've done to them again. That's not repentance, friends. You give the Bible say the prophet says Satan has every right to stay in that marriage. I would like to see their marriage fruitful, when their children will be blessed. But under that condition, there's got to be some circumcision. There's got to be some repentance. Beloved, maybe you are not married, you're single. But whatsoever thing, whatsoever sin is laying there, it's got to be cut away. It's got to be repented. It's got to be confessed. And the Son of God, Jesus Christ, will come in and give you that victory over this world. I want to close by saying that Jesus Christ is our goal. The G-E-O-L or G-O-E-L, rather. The person that meets all the requirements God is saying, God needs or requires to pay the price for us. It took a price to be paid for us. And to, to wrap up with the book of Revelations, you realize that when the, 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 the seals were broken, you realize that John, there was singing, in verse 9, the elders fell on their face and they took their harps and the vials with the odors of the prayers of the saints. Oh, the victory. I love it. The prayers of the saints, which is the, the sweet smell and savor. When you have faith in Jesus Christ, when you've repented and overcome sin in the world, your prayers go directly to the throne of God. That's when you can lay hands on the sick child and pray for them. That's when you can pray and, and restore life back into somebody that is lost. That's the victory we had in overcoming this world. The Bible say, Jesus said, ask what you have need of. In that day, ye shall know that you are in me and I in you. Hallelujah. Beloved, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in God, to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise and to know that thus saith the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And as we close, let us pray. Father, Lord, prayer adventure, something has been said, Lord, that makes someone to realize the condition they are in. Father, and if there's any sin in the life, Lord, I, 
I pray that at the repentance of their hearts, Lord, you would apply the bleach of your blood into their life and remove the stain of sin. And Father, when you have cleansed them from unrighteousness, may you baptize them with your Holy Spirit and begin the work of adoption in them. And that's what will restore faith. That's what will bring the pure faith of Jesus Christ into their soul. And they will be anchored on the word of God. And from that, henceforth, after that, Satan has no part in them. Lord, may you grant this unto them. Grant victory. And if there's anyone that is down in the valley, I pray you walk with us through the valleys, through the storms of life, through the fiery trials, Lord Jesus. And let us know that, yes, it is only for time. But victory is promised to all those who have the title deed, who have the redemptive blessing of God. For our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And no sin can erase it and take us out of the plan of God. We thank you for this hour and thank you for blessing us, Father, with this end time gospel, with the truth and the revelation, Lord, that sets us free. We thank you, Father. And I pray for this ministry of the gospel bite, that you would bless it and expand it, Lord. And let it be a source of strength and encouragement, a strength, a source of hope. Father, where your sons of God will come as a well of life and drink from it, Lord, to find strength for the day. It's my prayer. Granted, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen and amen. God, Richie, bless you, Brother Andrews. Thank you for bringing the word on to us today. Oh, my, 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 my. What a victory. So, my audience, you heard it all. Faith is our victory. And I like the way our brother typed it perfectly through that wonderful testimony he gave unto us. It is only our victory in the name of the Lord Jesus, that's going to overcome this world. Amen. This world, this temporal so journey of our journey here on cannot hold us, cannot prevent us to attaining that glorious city that the Lord has promised Amen. unto us, that you are a child of God. And the victory is in the Lord Jesus Christ. The lamb, the lion of the tribe of Judah, who was also a, a lamb slain even before the foundation of the world, a bloody lamb just to redeem you, to give us that victory. Amen. To overcome the world. Oh, I was so blessed. And our brother capped it up by saying that when... We have that faith. God confirmed that faith by giving us the title deed. Hallelujah. Amen. And that title deed is the power of the Holy Spirit. When Amen. you have it, you are sealed until the day of your redemption. Amen. This world, the system of this world, and all its troubles and all its struggles is not will not be able to hold you back because you have Amen. been sealed. You have the title deal. When, when Adam lost it, the, the last Adam came and claimed the title deed. And whosoever believed in him, he also gave it that title deed unto. Amen. Oh, my brothers and sisters and my audience, you heard it all. There are Andrews. May the Lord richly bless you and replenish the virtue that has come out of you today. We pray, O oh Lord, we pray that you will grow in your ministry, 
the ministry that the Lord has given unto you, that the Lord called you, and Satan wanted to attract that effort, the victory that you've had, the victory that overcame the world, God has given it unto you. Oh, may Amen. the Lord bless you richly. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you for coming on the gospel by. And so, my audience, we pray that our brother will come back again and bless us with the word. We are so blessed. So, this is where today we've come to the end of yet this episode. Our brother has prayed, and I pray that you come back. We always feature anointed servants of God who bring us the word as we are building our faith trying to overcome this world, trying to claim our title deed for that soon coming of the Lord. Come back. Log on, on to our website. We believe in encouraging and sharing with brethren of like precious faith. And if, if you found uh, uh, you found favor, you found virtue, you found something good in this video, I pray that you share with your friends so that we all become part of this great community. Shalom, and may the Lord richly bless you. Amen and amen. <laughs>